I'm sorry, this office is closed right now. Oh, how did you know I was here? <laughs> of course it was Luca. I thought you'd be at the party. Well, I heard that they didn't hold back on the expense this year for the food. Last year's spread was pretty good, and I had a glimpse of the menu. No, I haven't been. And I don't intend to. Because I think it would be best if people didn't see me out there mingling with students. The faculty is there, parents are there, and it's just... not the way I'd like to spend my day. We both know what'll happen if I do, so I'd rather avoid it. I'm rounding up the last bits. It does look bare, doesn't it? The day came quicker than expected, and I was prepared for this. But I still want to cling to this chair and this desk. <laughs> the only thing I can do is accept it and figure out what to do next. I told you already. This isn't your fault. It never was and never will be. We've gotten to this moment because our luck wasn't on our side, okay? We found each other at the worst time, but fell in love all the same. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. I can get another job, but there's only one of you, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I know it still weighs on you. I'm afraid it will for a while, but I don't regret the choices I've made. How many people can say they managed to teach at a university in London at 21? I'm sure the answer isn't a lot, and I'm proud of myself for being able to make it this far on my own merits. I've learned so much being here, and I have so much more to do with my life, and that part of my life is what I'll be sharing with you, and I can't wait to. I've had time to think about it. I weighed the pros and cons. Not like I had a choice, really, but... I'm trying to see the silver lining, as the Dean said. And as time goes by, I think I do. I've achieved a goal I've had since I was a kid, but... When I thought about it a little deeper, I wondered if that was my dream to begin with. For as long as I can remember, my life revolved around studying. I woke up, studied, went to school, studied, came home, studied through to dinner until it was time for me to sleep. And the way I was trying to teach my brother, as stubborn as he was, my parents thought that I would be good at it. I wanted to agree because I liked being helpful, and I could tell he didn't want to admit that my way of explaining things was simpler. So I thought, maybe that was my path, maybe that was what I should try and become. Yes, I did. But like I said, I don't know if it was really my dream to begin with. Hmm, I'm not sure. It would be nice to travel, but I need to think of what career I'd like next so I can work towards it. <laughs> You're going to force me to take a break, are you? Well... It would be nice to slow things down and live in the moment. And with you there, I have everything to look forward to. Mm hmm Because you are everything to me. Feels like we're not supposed to kiss in here, doesn't it? No one can see us. You're always worried about that, but we never get caught. Not at university, anyway. <laughs> I suppose that is a feat in itself. In the beginning, I was quite devious, wasn't I? But that's because controlling what I felt was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. 
It was fun to see how you'd react, but for me, I couldn't stop myself from kissing you when I knew what your feelings were. And both in my class, in this office, having you standing there, looking at me the way you do, how could I not? Yes, you made it very difficult for me to keep my sanity. I was holding on by a thread before we went on our first date. I might not have looked like I was struggling, but I was, believe me. I've never told you this, but when I was in my car at the end of teaching, I would scold myself openly. Like, I would drive down the road, having a conversation with myself to not give in and to repeat what could happen like a mantra. It helped on some days, but on others, well, you know. I kissed you all those times because I wanted you to know I felt the same way. I couldn't do it by words, otherwise I'd speak truth into the fact that I was attracted to a student, which was an, an almost cardinal sin for me. Now, despite everything that's happened, I'm glad I gave in the times that I did. I'm glad I went through the motions and allowed myself to actually strive for something I wanted, and it wasn't anyone else's idea. You should think more highly of yourself. You're smart, talented, gorgeous, attentive, and so much more. Adjectives only scratch the surface, but all I need you to know is that I love you, and I am so proud of you for reaching this far. I wish I could say the same to your family, but I can't meet them. Yes, I saw them. I watched the whole ceremony, away from the guests. I was in the small box on the left. I would have sat at the front with the rest of the staff, but the dean thought it best for me to stay out of sight, and I agreed with her. Someone would have started something, and then I would also be the teacher who ruined a whole graduating year. And I've done enough damage to this university. Hey, I still saw you take your diploma. I saw all of my students graduate with grins on their faces, and that's one of the best moments for me as a professor. To know that I had a hand in their growth. It's a simple pleasure, but I didn't want to miss it. I couldn't. They won't know. Only you will. And that's enough for me. Even though I want to go back with you and congratulate them personally, I think I'll do so through email instead. My presence alone will cause a commotion, so I'll leave through one of the side entrances. I had a good run here, and I'm ready for whatever comes next. You go out first, okay? I'll wait for a minute or two until I look up the office for good. Okay. Mm. Today, celebrate with your family. Maybe this weekend we can celebrate together, just you and me. Of course I want to. And I think we deserve that after everything. You certainly do. All right, I'll text you later. For now, go have fun at the after party. If you want to tell the rest of the students I wished I could be there, then that would, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> go on. Another cheers? Okay. Cheers! This is good. I didn't think I'd like the taste, but I'm actually starting to enjoy it. I think that's my sixth one. What? We're celebrating, aren't we? 
you're officially a graduate with the highest degree. That is easily cause for another drink, but I'll have one in a minute. I don't normally drink, only on special occasions. This is definitely one of them. I don't want to downplay your achievements. You deserve it all. And what did your family say about it? <laughs> well, I'm not surprised they would say something like that. To them, I probably coerced you and more despite being your professor. They will always see me that way. Maybe one day they'll get to know the true me. But I don't want to be found guilty before I even try. You said so yourself that they think I'm the bad guy. It'll take a lot for them to warm up to me, but I'm willing to wait for however long I need to until they're comfortable with meeting me. But for now, my priority is the one person who knows the true me. <laughs> of course it's you. How do you feel knowing that you have no more classes? No more waking up early, no more deadlines. Now you can sleep in and rest after a fantastic year. True, I'm like that. I feel like I work better with clear boundaries and deadlines because if I didn't have them, I'd focus on other things and what I originally wanted to finish would never get done. But it's, it's a good rule of thumb to carry on even after university. That's why I set clear times for myself so I can get all my work done, as well as other projects I've kept on the back burner. Hmm. Now that I don't have to think about the next curriculum or planning for it, I'll have much more time for my own things. And I can finally try and cook a good dinner. Yeah. I want to try and make a proper three-course meal, like what we were going to have at that restaurant. Oh, it's going to be fancy. I'll deck out the table, buy some nice wine with a bucket and ice and everything. And I'll be your date and the waiter. And the cook, for that matter. I'll be all yours in any form. What would you like to see me in more? A suit? A waiter's uniform? Or chef apron? <laughs> a maid outfit is out of the question. Absolutely not. True, you've already seen me in a suit for your graduation, so I shall surprise you next time with something. I don't know yet, but I have a few ideas mulling around. You'll be seeing all my outfits and clothes when we live together. Have you talked to your parents about it? And what did they say? Hmm. I knew they'd be against it. If I was a father, I'd be skeptical too. My child is going to live with a man who is their professor and someone I've never met before, so I understand. I do want to meet them, but I don't think now is the right time. If you reassured them that you want this, then we can continue to live our lives together and extend an olive branch to them when we're settled and in a stable place. I think so. I think the more we try to show that we're a couple that love each other and want to live together, the easier it'll be for them to accept it. But if they don't, then we can only do so much. I've thought about having a family, kids, but definitely not yet. I need to sort myself out first before I even think about that future. Hmm. You really want to know the details? Right. Um, lately, when it comes to starting a family, my imagination has you by my side. You're there, smiling, holding a little rugrat in your arms, and I see another standing by my leg reaching for me to pick them up. It'd be nice to have a place with a garden where they could play and run around. Yeah, I think an apartment might get too cramped, and a garden would be nice, wouldn't it? We could have those furniture sets on the patio. 
spot for a barbecue. <laughs> when my mind wanders, I think about it and compare it to the way I grew up. If I was ever going to have a child, I'd make sure they won't be brought up like I was. I'd still push them to achieving their best, but I won't center their whole existence on studying. I want to make sure they keep their childhood for as long as possible. We would go on trips to museums, water parks, arcades. Bowling would be fun too. I think it would be a lot of fun. I feel like I missed out on a lot. And how can you know what you want to do in life if you don't experience it? I'd be thrilled if my kids wanted to have the strangest careers, as long as they were happy pursuing it. Like a... Like a teddy bear surgeon, or an acupuncturist or something. They're the first ones that came to mind. But even if they wanted to be a, a lawyer, or an artist, or something else entirely, I want to support them however I can, no matter what they do. Well, I... I assumed I would still be a teacher when the time came, but... Life throws curveballs. You want another? Okay. What? I'm... I'm fine. Yes, I just really like the drink. It's been a long time since I've been able to unwind and not care about how I feel the day after. I don't have that kind of responsibility anymore. No, I'm fine. Yes, I am lying. Why do you want to know how I really feel? It's only going to make things worse, so it's best I keep it to myself. Because I don't want you feeling bad. I know you already do, that's why I don't want to say anything. You ever thought that I don't say what's on my mind to spare you from the guilt I know you'll steep in? You can handle yourself, I know. I just don't want you to always think about it. It's on my mind too. You really want to know. Fine. I... never really wanted to resign. No. I had my life planned out. Everything. I was, I was going to continue teaching at a university and finish my PhD within the next year. Once I managed to get that, I would change to other modules. Um, Post-colonial theory or gothic literature, maybe. There was a module, um, Literary Revolutions, that I thought would be fun to teach. I wanted to expand my field as much as I could and show that I was capable of doing the workload stuff twice my age were complaining about. Hmm. I know they all looked down on me, even before everything happened between us. You know, they hid it behind empty kindness, the I hope this isn't too much for you, or sharing the burden isn't a sign of weakness. I don't know what they really meant. They meant that if it was too much for me, being the novice that I am, that I shouldn't strive to do more than what is asked of me. It's like they wanted to see me fail, and then everything with you gave them a reason to outwardly hate me. I bet they were waiting for it, waiting for some things so they could glower and sneer louder as if I wouldn't see the way they changed around me. A part of me knows they did it on purpose. Claire thinks they felt threatened by me. I was younger, but I was in their position. They'd worked up to get there for years, and here I was, barging in on their territory, being the same age they were when they completed their undergraduate degree. I was like a walking example of a person that looked like they'd been handed everything, right? They probably thought I was spoiled, or I pulled some strings to get the job. They know nothing about what I had to endure to get where I was. How many nights I didn't sleep so I could study material two years in advance because that was what my parents wanted from me. You know, I might pick things up quickly, quicker than most people, 
That doesn't mean I liked it or looked forward to seeing people older than me look at me like some tryhard trying to be different. I was trying my best. I wanted to make my parents proud and they always used to, you know, compare me to the other kids in their friend circle or at church. Whatever conversation they were having with other people, somehow it always doubled back on me and what I achieved and what I was doing and how smart I was. And the thing about it was, while they were saying all those things, not one nice thing was said about my brother. Not one. <laughs> you know, one time my dad said something about loving his firstborn. Like, the firstborn is supposed to be the best or something. But it was right in earshot of both of us. And I wanted to say something. He didn't deserve to hear all the time that he wasn't good enough because I set the bar too high without meaning to. He was a bright kid. He had his own talents, but because he didn't study like me, didn't listen like me, they thought he was rebelling or was inadequate. So he became a rebel. He proved them right, even though he had a heart of gold. But whenever I would try to help him, I think he must have seen it as me trying to hold something over his head. But I just wanted to take care of him. That's all I ever wanted. And now, I don't know where he is, or if he's even alive. I wanted him to see what I had accomplished, but a part of me wonders if he thought I was just rubbing it in his face. That was never my intention to begin with. On a day where he really needed my help with an assignment, I think it was on Ketsukoatl, he jokingly said that I'd be a good teacher, and I think I took it to heart. I think I wanted him to be right, and I wanted him to see that he was right. But it's too late for that now. I'm officially unemployed. I kept saying I had a choice, and I did. I did have a choice, and I knew what the consequences would be, but I made it anyway. So then I became stuck between a rock and a hard place with nowhere to move. The only thing I could do, what I was forced to do, is to leave the situation entirely. I need to face that consequence now. It does. It does hurt. I feel like all the work I'd done, all the sleepless nights, all of it was for nothing. I know, it's the nagging voice, the one that tells me that I spent those years to end up back where I started, only without a family. Hmm, maybe you're right. The students I taught were such bright minds, so passionate and so full of life. I envied a lot of them. They would come to my class learn, and then after, meet with friends or enjoy the city. Talk to their families if they could. And what would I do? Go home and work. No friends to call, no family that I really care about to pick up the phone. That's all I did for the time I taught there. I did go out with the teachers once in the beginning as a celebratory dinner, just to get to know the department and for them to know me. Back then I thought they were nice, you know. They invited me out to make me feel comfortable working with them. But they pressured me to drink and let loose, but I stuck to my guns, and I think they thought I was prude or too good for making a fool of myself, a killjoy or whatever. But I didn't want them to think bad of me. I guess they did anyway. Yes, all this time the person I had was you. You were the only one who kept my head lifted. On some days, I wanted to bury my head in the pillow and stay there. Not go to work, not face the stairs and the snide comments. But then I thought of you. Seeing your face. Just thinking about it made me smile and made it worth going in. I know I should have more reasons to actually go to work, but you helped me more than you realize. 
true. I wouldn't be here right now if I hadn't given in. But then, I would still be in my routine. I'd still be alone, doing the same routine every day. Every weekend, never giving myself a break, never going out to enjoy the museums and the galleries, the food. You almost made me feel alive again, even though I was doing something I loved. There was still room for something more, and that was you. <laughs> You're my family now. This is our place, including Oscar and Wilde over there swimming about. <laughs> yes, it hasn't been yours for long, but one day I want you to feel like it can be. I want you to add yourself to it. All of your stuff isn't here yet, but I'm seeing the gradual change. And I like it. I want to see more of it. Hmm. I want to see you being more demanding and confident. You don't hold back, which is one of the things I love about you. Most of the time you say what's on your mind, and I don't have to guess, which makes my life a little easier. I keep my cards close to my chest because I love the way your eyebrows furrow when you try to figure me out. Oh yes, I love a lot about you. It's up to you to see what they are. Not giving it away that easily. And I'll most likely add way more to the list in the future when I get to know you more. Hmm. But we could try something new now. Come here. I propose we have a little dance. I've never had a proper one. Only school discos. All the kids used to dress up and do the same dances every year, like um, the Macarena, or the Cha-Cha Slide, um, Agadu, remember that one? Um, and there was that, uh, what was it? The one where we used to make a long train, um... Yes! The conga! Those are the only dances I've ever done. This kind shouldn't be too hard, even if the room is spinning a bit. Well, having a drink or two should make it easier to forgive my mistakes. <laughs> yes, or six or seven. I actually don't know how many I've had, but I feel... Pleasantly buzzed. Even if I was completely sober, I wouldn't be able to follow the beat anyway. I've never really had the knack for picking up music or the beats. I tried to play an instrument once, but couldn't get my head around that either. The violin. In low school, when we had music lessons, it was so different to what I was being taught. You know, taught with books and writing. An instrument was something else, something new. I didn't have to use my brain much, and it was all about placement and knowing how your fingers should hold the bow, or where they need to be on the neck. I remember getting cramps with the way I tried to contort my hand, but I found it fun. They offered it as an after-school activity, but my parents thought it was a useless skill and a waste of time, so... I stopped it. I... I wouldn't mind trying it out again. I'd be bloody awful at it, but I wouldn't mind. Your ears will bleed. That much I know. <laughs> Maybe you could play too. And if you're bad, then at least we'll be bad together. <laughs> of course. I'm always up for that. I think now we can plan what we want to do. We're both not at university anymore, so we don't have strict schedules. 
technically we can do what we want. Don't you think we both deserve a break? We could binge movies and TV shows into the early morning now. We could go out at night to pubs or clubs and have a good time. No, I've never been to a club before. I've heard how chaotic they can get, but I want to experience it for myself and see what it's like. <laughs> can you tell that I don't drink often? Would it be sad if I said I didn't have anyone to drink with? No, in uni I did. It was strictly for social reasons or special occasions, so I've never built up any tolerance towards it. That's why I don't have a favorite alcohol, I just go with the punches, really. You're holding yours very well. Better than I expected, actually. I don't know. I should have seen it coming with your friend circle. I'm not saying that your friends were a bad influence. I kind of wished I had friends like that. Yeah, the ones who wanted you to see the world, to experience new things. How are they, by the way? When was the last time you talked to them? Oh, really? That's good to know. Try and keep those friendships. They were advocating for you, weren't they? Hmm. They're good friends. Yes, even Tristan. No, I'm not jealous about him anymore. I know that I have you. You're here with me, not him. You find it cute? No, it's not cute at all. You haven't ever been jealous of me, have you? Oh, of course. You were jealous about Luca, weren't you? I don't see how you could be. He was only there to help me as an assistant. Or was it the amount of time I was suddenly spending with him? You know he has a partner, right? And they're engaged. Exactly. He never had eyes for me. And I didn't for him. Yes, I did say that. He is cute. I can love you and still appreciate the beauty of other people. I'm not going to pursue them because I already have you. And I don't need anyone else. Luca was never a threat to you, okay? He never stood a chance. I won't say he's my type. He's too... adorable and pure. I feel like it's not right to take that kind of aura. Well, you... You had an aura of temptation. You reeled me in with your words and your charm. Your intelligence. I didn't stand a chance. No? I'm happy for it. You think we should go for some dancing classes? Yeah, why not? It'll be something new. The tango? Or... The salsa? Hmm, actually, I think the salsa will be good. It'll be an excuse to have you close and make you swoon. You know I love making you flustered. I love it when you look away, even though you're hanging on to my every whisper. How you press into me, but lean away as if you can't make up your mind on whether to stay or go. I mean, look at you. So cute. Yes, cuter than Luca. Cuter than anyone I've ever seen. Especially when you get all coy. I want to see it all. All dimensions of who you are. We can finally do that now without having to worry about my stupid colleagues. <laughs> what? They're ignorant and nosy. I'm glad I don't have to interact anymore with a fake smile. All I need is you. I... I hope that isn't too blunt of me. 
I don't want to press you into thinking I'll go insane without you. I just want you to understand that what you mean to me, it can't compare to anyone else. No one. That's the honest truth. You are my deepest love. One I'll happily drown in. Hmm. I love you too. One day, we'll make a life meant for us. Where I'll be doing a job I love, you'll be doing a job you love. We'll be a family of two with your parents' approval. Maybe. I... They might warm up to me. I want them to. Because I'm missing out on a whole part of you. My parents, I might get in touch with them and maybe you can meet them, but not now. Their beliefs, they would condemn me and I don't need that. And my brother, well, I would if I could. I really think you'd like him. The brother that I remember anyway. Who knows what he's like now. You're going to keep my hope up. Mm. Thank you. Yet another reason why I love you. Yes, I'm going to find more and more. And when you officially move in, I'll know every little detail. Even the embarrassing ones. <laughs> I don't know. The ones that you'll never tell me. I have to figure it out myself. It's like a game. Hmm. There's plenty you don't know about me. But now, we have all the time in the world to share everything. I can't wait either. But first, let's continue this dance. <laughs> yes. A dance with the most gorgeous person. I'll compliment you all I like, and even if it gets too much, I'll do it some more just to see you crumble. Because I like it when you try to be all assertive, but are very easily defeated by things that I say. Oh, let your imagination run wild on that one. <laughs> see what I mean? Sometimes the thought of something is much more tantalizing than its actuality. <laughs> to be honest with you, my mind is just running on autopilot right now. <sighs> How about another drink? Hey, I haven't let loose like this in... I don't know how long. So indulge me, please. You want me to beg you? <laughs> I am not drunk enough to do that. Let's toast to a future together, tackle together, for whatever may come our way next. <laughs> Where to next? Hmm. Well, we went to the British Museum last time, so maybe an art gallery? Or is, is that too much like the museum? Mm, I've heard of one in particular in Soho, the Grandavino Gallery. Apparently it has the largest exhibition of Serini paintings in the world, so we could go see it one day. Well, we'll be in Soho, so we have plenty of pubs and restaurants to try out. We could even make a bucket list if you want to. Alright, bucket list it is. Actually, I do want to know what's on yours. Mm. For me, I've wanted to visit at least one country in every continent. Then I could say I've traveled the whole world. 
I want to take pictures of all the monuments. You know, see history with my own eyes instead of reading about them in books. I think it's time to do that. And I have someone to do it with now. It was great doing it for myself, but it's memorable with someone else. Doing something for the first time, we share that experience together, and it becomes special. Or does that sound too... mushy? <laughs> Being mushy comes easy when I talk to you. So, any ideas on what we can do? I don't want it to just be me giving the ideas. Let's clear off some things from your bucket list. An arcade? Really? I can't remember the last time I went to one, but I've never done DDR before. It looked like fun, but my coordination is disastrous. <laughs> okay, let's do that then. <laughs> no, that will not be recorded. You're going to have to watch me carefully to remember it. Doing a selfie before is fine. You want to document our adventures or something? Wow. You just got cuter. Mm hmm. So cute that I want to keep you all to myself. <laughs> You're right, I will. And we'll be dancing in moonlight, sharing the starlights together. <laughs> I'll be something and be mine, watching your eyes shine forever. What, you don't want me to serenade you? <laughs> you don't seem to realize you challenge the sunrise and I can't remember the lyrics. <laughs> I'm keeping